Luke, you will go to the Dagobah system. There you will learn from Yoda. But I was going into Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. Now all I gotta do is find this Yoda. R2! You smell something? <laughs> you seek Yoda. We've gotta do something. That is why you fail. here to welcome you the mothers, the fathers, the boys and the girls, and the children of all ages to the Rock and Roll Circus. Welcome to the circus. Oh, oh. You're with Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. And this is the special Star Wars edition. Star Wars, wonderful Star Wars, fabulous Star Wars. All right, Bill Murray, that's enough. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so this is so Star Wars comes out. It's yes. it's it's coming out today, yes. and uh, we're gonna go see it later on. We're really excited. Can't wait. I can't wait. I've been like watching all. I've been rewatching the trailers, the trailers and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the music that you're listening to in the background here is um, a 30th uh, anniversary a collector's edition box set of all the music from Star Wars by John Williams. Yes. Um, and uh, I, I'm gonna share some stuff with you guys later on a little bit about about the music. That I learned because I was such a Kevin. While well, we were both Star Wars yes. nerds, huge. but I was a huge Star Wars nerd. Yes. I read everything about, it, especially about the music. I was uh, uh, mired in having to take piano lessons at the time, and I, you know, was not into oh. it. But we got the Star Wars book, okay. And so we started learning the Star Wars music, oh. and so that kind of like inspired me to like want to oh, continue very with good. the yeah, piano. We'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Hey, welcome, get, everybody. welcome everybody. And uh, when, when I, as we talked about last week and this week, we're just going to spend an a couple weeks or so just reviewing and just playing some of the artists that we love so much from the from the year 2015 yes. 2015 was a really great year oh, yeah, yeah. and we met a lot of cool people we had a lot of fun yes and we're still having fun right are you having a good time i'm having a blast everybody of course you are yes. of course, of course you are. but uh, uh so we have some great music for you guys tonight yes. uh, some of the bands that you're going to hear tonight I'm really excited about. Yeah. My mouse will do its thing. There we are. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we've got Convoy, yeah. the Jeff Fetterman band, yeah. Sate. Oh, cool. Sate. Yes, awesome. We yes. got Sate. Garrison Bailey, sure. one of our favorites. Yes. And my uh, fr- uh, good friend, uh, John- Angry Johnny Stangry. Yes. Uh, but for real quick, before we get started, let's just mm-hmm. talk real quick about our sponsors. Yes. I'd like to thank uh, Positively Pittsburgh Live Magazine. That's PPL Mag yeah. uh, for you guys out there ca- writing it down in shorthand. <laughs> and uh, this is a great place for to. Uh, it's Pittsburgh's uh, uh, internet hub right. for great internet television, videos, uh, radios, uh, radios, uh, bl- pod- podcasts. podcasts. Uh, there's it. great blogs. There's all kind of great information there for businesses. There's a great place to patronize businesses if you're looking to get certain services done. I highly recommend that you check out. It's pplmag.com. Go there. And I'd like to also thank uh, our new sponsor, our latest sponsor, yes. uh, MTS Management hey. Group. Uh, they are a rock star in the music industry, yes, uh, providing 
providing artist management as well as uh, music uh, uh, publicist services. So you definitely want to patronize those guys. If you're a musician, you want to go to uh, mtsmanagementgroup.com. Yes, do it. Check, check that out. Well, Kevin, what do you say about a little music? Let's wanna, hear it. Let's rock out. This is the band Convoy Gasoline on the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. His, his body language and and um, in the second one uh, Kirchner uh, because by now David probably knew his voice was not going to be used so he just sort of threw, threw the lines in 
And Kirchner gave me a soundtrack with him doing the voice of Darth Vader. Kirchner, Kirchner's voice is like this, and you, you know, and, uh, I'm imitating him badly. But it was scary as hell. Kirchner was scarier than I could ever be. I remember the, the second, when, when George had a chance to co counsel me, uh, he, uh, he said, we don't know what we did right, so let's just try what we did. And I, and I naturally, I wanted to make Darth Vader more interesting, you know, more subtle, you know, more uh, psychologically oriented, and you know. And so he said, "No, no. W what we're finding out is you got to keep his voice on a very narrow band of inflection, because he ain't human, really." So that that was the answer. Uh, J the wonderful James Earl Jones talking about his voicing Darth Vader there. Yes. Um, and before that, we were listening to Convoy. Oh, yeah. And you can check those guys out at Reverb Nation backslash Convoy. One of the greatest moments on the Lidini Rock and Roll Circus in the past year was playing that band. I just so, yeah. and we, Kevin and wow. I, like, we're rocking out all over again to it, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. Really enjoying it. Um, so, yeah, man. So, um, we've got to play Jeff Fetterman here in a second. Oh. But uh, so, do you remember when the first time you saw Star Wars? Yes. How old were you? Uh, well, it came out in '77, so I was um, I was actually 11. I hadn't turned 12 yet. I was in sixth grade. That's that who, magical who did, time. Who did you go with? Uh, my mom. My mom took my brother, sister, and I to a. Um, it was a little theater downtown. Um, it was an old bank that okay. they had renovated, and they had theaters in there, and that's where we saw it. It was a couple of weeks after it came out. But uh, I can remember taking my brother, yeah, yeah, and I try to explain this to my kids. This is the movie you went to see over and over yeah. and over again. Well, there was no, there wasn't even VHS no, tapes. No, yeah. no. So to see it, you had to go see it again. And I can remember taking my brother and sister down to the Warner Theater downtown Pittsburgh. <laughs> yes, and um, you like the build up. <laughs> I had to throw that in there, guys. And, and, and this was a couple of weeks after the movie came out, and there was it was standing room only. Yeah. They overbooked the theater because so many people still wanted to see it. Um, I, you Crazy. know, we I did a post on Facebook up a couple of weeks ago about you know movies that you know you've seen many times right. but you still are at love. You know, yeah. And every almost everybody said Star, Star Wars. Wars. Exactly, um, that was in my list. Yeah. And uh, I saw Star Wars nine times in the theater. Ooh. Uh, the first time, though, same situation. My mom took Paul and I, my sister Paul and I, uh -huh. to see it at the Crest uh, over here, um, not far from where we're working right now. It's no longer there, but it was a little theater and uh, in like a little shopping plaza. Yeah. And I just remember being blown away. I had a friend in school. I was 10 years old, and I had a friend in school. His name was Michael Scoverin, and I don't know whatever happened to Michael Scoverin. I've tried to find him on Facebook, yeah. but yeah. he had seen it before me, and he was like, he's like, because he and I were big Star Trek fans. Okay. And he's like, Lou, you have to see Star Wars. Mm -hmm. He's like, he's, 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 it's, it's, you, it's a game changer. He says, Star <laughs> Trek is like boring, slow. You have to see Star Wars. And um, I was just, you know, that opening scene right. with the space, you know, the, the Star right. Destroyer. Right. And yeah. I was like, oh, I, I was like transfixed. It's blown. And even my mom realized like this is a cool this movie is this is yeah. fun you know yeah. we, she enjoyed it um, so it ended up being like a very cool um, nice. experience but I saw it in a theater nine times Wow. I was, but I was ten years old. Yeah, so it was. A, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, we just just great memories yep. around it for a lot of people out there. Oh yeah, um, remember the first time they saw Star Wars, and um, you know, there's always like, where were you when you know Kennedy was shot? Where were you when the towers went down? You know, so always <laughs> negative, you? ugly yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, but something like a lot of people remember when they first saw Star mm -hmm. Wars and mm -hmm. what they were thinking exactly. and everything. So. Very cool stuff. And speaking of fun stuff, I'm going to play. Yeah. Uh, this is the, again. This th this is a bro. You know, just yes. like we a uh, couple uh, last week we played Mike Roth, my bro. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another bro, uh, Jeff Fetterman, yeah. and uh, we just wish him all the success in the world. He's got a great new yes, record. Yes, uh, he put out a great record in 2015 called Bottle Full of Blues. I think he might actually be working on another record. I think. Awesome. I hope so. Uh, me too. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is one of our favorites, Funky Candy, Bottle Full of Blues, Jeff Fetterman Band on the Ludini Rock. Funky Rosa. Candy. In my pocket
Jeff Fetterman, everybody. A little Star Wars flashback for you. Until this battle station is fully operational, we are vulnerable. The Rebel Alliance is too well equipped. They're more dangerous than you realize. Dangerous to your Starfleet, Commander, not to this battle station. The Rebellion will continue to gain a support in the Imperial Senate. The, the Imperial long- Senate will no longer be of any concern to us. I have just received word that the Emperor has dissolved the Council permanently. The last remnants of the old republic have been swept away. It's impossible. How will the emperor maintain control without the bureaucracy? The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. And what of the rebellion? If the rebels have obtained a complete technical readout of this station, it is possible, however unlikely, that they might find a weakness and exploit it. The plans you refer to will soon be back in our hands. Any attack made by the rebels against this station would be a useless gesture, no matter what technical data they've obtained. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Don't try to frighten us with your sorcerer's ways, Lord Vader. Your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes or given you clairvoyance enough to find the rebels' hidden fort. Wait for it. Wait for it. I find your lack of faith disturbing. Oh, yes. Wait, enough of this. Vader, release him. Vader, As release you wish. him. Ah. This bickering is pointless. Well, it is. Lord Vader will provide us with the location of the rebel fortress by the time this station is operational. That we will then crush the rebellion Peter, with one swift Peter Cushing, stroke. Right? Yeah, Peter Cushing. That was a uh, great. Uh, I mean, that's a great like uh, scene from the original Star Wars. I find your and a great line. Oh yeah, it's I used find to this like, day, yeah. people still uh, parody it. So here's my uh, lead up to Star Wars. Oh, real quick, real quick. You oh, go, did here. <laughs> Let me go, plug. Go, go, go. No, we no, are no. doing this. Is the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus? Oh, is that what this is? Ludini Rock and Roll Circus oh. and we play Jeff Fetterman Funky Candy, yes. and you can check out everything that uh, Mr. Fetterman. Fetterman, Fetterman. Uh, you can check out everything he's got going on at Jeff Fetterman 
dot com. That's J E F F F. E-T-T-E-R-M-A-N dot com. And uh, we love Jeff. He's one of our favorite artists. Hey. He's a bro. And we wish him all the luck in the world. Continue, cool. Mr. Very Mr. Cool. O'Con. By the way, you're listening to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. My name is Lou Lombardi, a.k.a. Ludini. And sitting next to me is my very good friend and partner in crime, uh, Kevin O'Connor. What's up, everybody? How you doing? All right, so here's my, uh, my lead up to Star Wars. Uh, I remember hearing of Star Trek. And this is at this point, it was not syndicated. I was just a kid. I was like six, seven years old. And I remember being in South Hills Village, and they had the big color TV display, and there was this show on. And I stopped, and I'm looking at it, and they had all the volumes turned down. But there was a guy with pointy ears. Yeah. And said, I'm like, what is this? And my dad's like, oh, that's Star Trek. Come on, we have to go home. And I, like, I was like walking away from the window uber slow. You know how you do it? Right. I was fascinated. Then maybe a couple months later... One of the UHF channels started playing it, and it was real fuzzy and right. snowy. And UHF. I would watch it. This is how old we are, guys. Yeah, we, I would actually try to tune it in, and I'd watch it amid the snow, going, "Mr. Spock." Okay, Mr. I got the point of years of Mr. Spock. So I was hooked on science fiction, and then Star Wars came out, and I'm sorry, it left left the original Star Trek kind of in the dust. Okay, and if I may continue, continue this please continue. It left Star Wars in the dust until J.J. Abrams did the new Star Trek. And I was hooked again. I'm like, oh, yes. And that's why I have such high hopes for the movies we're going to see tonight. Well, I mean, I like yeah. Jay Abrams, other, other films a lot. Um, uh, uh, Cloverfield, I really like. Awesome. And yes, I'm not a big, good. I'm really kind of done with the found footage right, stuff. Right, it's, right. But that's great. That was good. That uh, what's, was good. The, what's the one with the kids? Of, um, uh, uh, Super 8. Super 8 was uh, awesome. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, like, it's just yeah. a great movie. So he's got, and then of course we did with Star Trek. Um, my feeling about, and I just let me throw this in because a lot of people are like either Star Trek or Star, or Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day that like Star Trek not so much, but I love, I mean, Star Wars not so much, but I love Star Trek. Yes. Um, I'm, you know, and I'm one of those people who absolutely love both. Um, right. I uh, loved. I was like, I had left Trek behind for Star Wars for uh, f- uh, f- uh, for a few years. And um, then the movies started coming out. Right. Not the AJ, yeah, not yeah, the yeah. JJ, but the original movie. the original you know? with the uh, shot. And, and um, yeah, I, yeah. you know, the Star Trek, the motion picture is kind of like, there's not a lot of action in it. But what's fun about it is, is how they get the crew back together. And exactly. That's really neat. Yes. Um, and that was kind of the same thing in the, in the reboot. The anticipation of bring, them bringing the crew. You knew who the crew was. Right. There was right. nobody who went to see that movie didn't who didn't know who you the know, crew was. You know what I mean? So it was like fun to kind yeah. of see them get. And that was sure. the thing about Star Trek: The Motion Picture, the original one. Um, Star Trek is um, it's a different thing. And you know that's you know people the like, people say Star Trek, Star Wars. What's the difference? Well, they don't know what the hell we're talking about, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's two completely different universes. Yes, it's amazing yes, stuff. Yes. It's all great. Um, well, I, I you know the, uh, even before the J.J. Uh, Abrams Star Trek, you're the one that got me back into it because the original episodes are on Netflix. Right, and I started watching. I'm like, you know what? These were really good. Well, what they did the with time. what they really did with the uh, in, in case and sorry, we sorry for you Star Wars fans. We're talking about Star Trek for just one second, yeah, yeah. just because we're Kevin and I are having a, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, we're in charge. What they damn it. what they did was um, they went back and they took the, all the exteriors and a lot of the effects uh-huh. they redid. So they don't look so like 1960s. So they kind of stand out. Yeah, they stand out. And oh, then the whole thing's been re yeah. sort of remastered. It's in high definition right, digital. Right. It's very vivid. Um, so those bright <laughs> uniforms. They're really bright. Oh, really right yeah. now. So, but anyway, so you know which Star right? Wars is the new Star Wars. The J.J. Abrams Star Wars is at out. Kevin and I are on. <laughs> we're on fire. We're on we're freaking fire. fire about it. And uh, Kevin, I have a bone to pick with you about Return of the Jedi, which we'll talk about oh, after this. My and I goodness. think, is Pittsburgh Kevin here tonight? He is. He's uh, he's <clears> upstairs <throat> watching TV. I let him come in this week. Oh, okay, let him come in this week. It's kind of cold out, but yeah. Yeah, he's All here. Right. And it is the Christmas season, um, but uh, this week, no Christmas. It's Star Wars, guys. Star Wars, Star baby. Wa- you know, it's saying something with Star Wars trumps Christmas. <laughs> no, that's true. That's but true. anyways, uh, this is one of our favorite artists. I interviewed this uh, lady. Uh, go to LudiniRockAndRollCircus.com. You can go back through all my back up episodes and everything. I did interview this lady a few months ago. Sate, this kicks freaking ass. Do it! Warrior Sate Do on the Ludini it. Rock and Roll Circus. Mama gave this warrior child a name. And I'm gonna do, do, do proud. You're gonna know my 
In this installment of the StarWars.com 10, we're picking our little green friend's finest words of Jedi wisdom, from the Council on Coruscant to his days on Dagobah. For this list, we're focusing on quotes from the Star Wars films only, ranking them on memorability, significance, and impact. Number 10. When 900 years old, you reach, look as good you are not. He's powerful, he's wise, and he still has a sense of humor, even when facing his own mortality. Kicking off our list is this playful joke, Yoda's own wry acknowledgement that time has caught up with him. It's tinged with sadness, but also shows his greatness as a teacher. Yoda doesn't want his student to feel burdened with the fact that he's dying. Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. Yoda's wisdom comes from hundreds of years of study, journeys to mystical worlds, and far-ranging experiences. But he doesn't think he knows everything. Here, the Jedi Master recognizes the value of innocence. So, we are celebrating Star Wars tonight, but I want to sort of back announce we just played Sate. And uh, we're huge Sate fans here. You can go to... uh, stateofsate.com to find out what Sate's got going on. I mean, if that doesn't get your, like, uh, you know, stuff pumping, I mean, I don't know. You're, you did. Wow. You're, you're dead. You're dead. You did. If you you've been, you, wow. Yeah, I mean, you're not even on the dark wow. side. You're just yeah, plain dead. Uh, we're featuring uh, this great uh, uh, music of Star Wars, 30th yes. anniversary John Williams. John Williams. And I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about this. I want to tell you something you might find interesting. Because I was a huge student of uh, this stuff when it came out. Each character, okay. well, most of the characters, the main characters, have themes. Okay. John Williams composed themes for each character. Now, the main theme, the, the movie, that mm-hmm. opens, that's actually Luke's theme. And anytime, if you watch the original Star Wars, anytime Luke comes on the screen, yeah. that theme is referenced in the music somewhere. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> Vader. Uh-huh. Has the it's the imperial theme dum right. dum da dum okay yeah, right so that so if Vader and Luke are on the screen at the same time, Williams found a way to kind of interweave those themes. It's brilliant. Sometimes oh, that might be the baseline, and then Luke's theme will come on top. It's amazing, incredible. Yeah, it's very very I cool. Never noticed that. absolutely. And but if that's you watch, so good. If you watch yeah. the chase scene in the Death Star, uh-huh. when the when the imperial troops come around, right. it's the Empire theme. Okay, when it's when Luke, as soon as Luke comes on the screen, he finds some way to weave in. Weave it in. Luke, right. <clears throat> ben Kenobi's theme. <clears throat> ben has a theme. Leia has a theme. Mm-hmm. And he does He does all this stuff. And what it does is this, uh, this, when I read this, this really made me realize the, and I was just very young. I was right. 10, 11 years old For when sure. I read this. I It just blew my mind that it made, made an impression on me that the emotional connection that music has mm-hmm. to people and what he what Williams did was he made you really take he took the emotion to another level by every time that character came on the screen you heard There's that music the exactly. and and the mu- and if you listen to each person's theme uh, if you get the um, the box set you can just you can get it's on Spotify um, you can listen to it the themes are there and when you hear uh-huh. That's Luke's theme. Exactly. Da, there it is. Da, da. Yeah, it is. So Luke, came, apparently, that's oh some scene God, where Luke came on awesome. the, on the screen. Yep. Um, but w- each each character has a theme. So so it creates an emotional feeling about. It adds to that. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the reasons why, guys, you don't realize why you love these characters so much is because the music is their the kind emotional of emotional yeah, draw. Absolutely. Exactly. It's, it's it's beefing that up. Wow. It's very very cool stuff. Um, we're gonna have. Uh, is Pittsburgh Kevin hanging around somewhere? He is. You want me to get him down here? And he has something he wants to tell you. That Kevin. Gives an idea. All right. All right. Kevin! Pittsburgh Kevin! Come on down! She hey. telling you not to hey. everything over. Sorry, sorry oh about that. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that bottle. Hey. Hey, Lou, how come his mic smells like, uh, uh, it smells like Coronas or something? It's crazy. Like anyway. the Corona from the sun, dude? Okay. Anyway, so Lou, you know about me, right? I'm an idea man. <laughs> you know, ladies no, and gentlemen, wait, 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 ladies yeah. and gentlemen, oh, Pittsburgh boy. Kevin. Yeah. If you want to know more about Pittsburgh Kevin, go to pittsburghkevin.com. Go ahead. I just plugged your website. Um, go ahead. Let's I, hear it. I don't have a. I don't have yes, a you website. do. Go to wait, pittsburghkevin.com. You know, I go go buy that, right? <laughs> anyway, oh, that'd be awesome to have a website. I could put all my musings on that website. Anyway, okay. So listen to this. You know me, right, Lou? <laughs> I'm an idea man. Yeah, I think I know. Yeah, you. I got all these ideas in my head, right? Got all these ideas. All these ideas. Well, you know how like there's been a revival of like vinyl, like all the hipsters right You don't mean them. like vinyl 
conversation. Not pants. Oh, fuck. No, no pants. Those, by the way, those are nice vinyl where, where, pants. Where do you get those at? The vinyl pants. Where do you get them at? Pants and that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Jim Craig. Yes, Pittsburghers. Yes, <laughs> Pittsburghers know what I just did there. Anyway, so listen, I'm an, I don't know if you know this. I'm an idea man. I don't know if I mentioned that before. But uh, so, okay, the whole vinyl revival. Everybody's buying records again. Well, I got an idea. I'm going to start reissuing eight tracks. Remember what? That? Yeah, eight tracks. Remember them? I grew up with those things. I remember my mom listening to Sam Cooke. He said, Frankie and Johnny were sweethearts. At least that's the way. The story goes. Remember that? <laughs> those darn things would click right in the middle from one track to the other. I hated that's true. that. I'm like, what's happening with Frankie and Johnny? I gotta wait for it to go to the next track. But yeah, what are you gonna do? Yeah, they made that clicking sound between the oh, two. Oh, that's crazy, man. Chase cracked. Like but don't you remember Pittsburgh, Kevin? Yes, sir. The 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 uh the eight track players they had the one big speaker on yeah. them, and it looked like a dynamite. Look at you yeah. the thing at yeah. the top. That those was were, awesome. Those were kind of cool. I'm gonna bring those back too. Thanks, Lou. Hold on, let me write that down. <laughs> Get my paper. Kevin, uh, Pittsburgh paper. Kevin is an idea man. So if you idea. have an idea, call or if you need an idea, go to my website that that don't exist. <laughs> the PittsburghKevin.com. <laughs> Hold on, man. Now here's my idea. Here's my idea. He's this got, guy. Lou, Pittsburgh Kevin is whacked out. Did I tell you something. I tell I'm an me idea, something. I'm an idea man. Oh God. So you know how like vinyl has all the popular guys, you know Led Zeppelin and that, you know Foreigner, you know all the real popular guys. Yeah. So for me, when I do the eight tracks, what I'm gonna do? <laughs> no, this is I'm gonna do like not so popular <laughs> stuff. You know, like, remember K Tell? <coughs> I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the K the K Tell collection. Yeah. Hey man, is that Freedom Rock? They turn it up, man. You know stuff like that. You know. And with that, <laughs> I exit. Hey, everybody, Pittsburgh Kevin. Yeah, thank you, Pittsburgh Thanks for Kevin. listening to my ramblings. All right, I'm out. All right, P- Pittsburgh Kevin. A tracks. Okay, we're going to play Garrison <sighs> Bailey. Oh, um, please do. But at first, I have to talk. I got to talk <laughs> oh, to you no, about something. Oh, yeah. You're, okay, go ahead. Okay, you. I'm sure you have no recollection of this. Probably not. You guys all know. This microphone Everybody, does smell like Coronas. This, uh, y'all know. Y'all, hey, y'all. Ahead. Y'all, yins, yins, is, is, yins, guys, is, is. <laughs> yes. um, do you, you know that mm-hmm. we all know that Luke and Leia are brother and sister. I know that now. Well, I did not know that oh. when I saw when um, before oh. when Return of the Jedi came oh, out. No. And it was like uh, my parents couldn't take me like the first weekend, and they uh-huh. would take me the second weekend or whatever. So in the meantime, I'm talking to this guy over here on the phone. Me. And he's like, um. Dude, uh, I, I shouldn't tell you this, but um, oh, no. Luke and Leia are brother and sister. <laughs> like, well, I was like, maybe. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't mad because. Past Kevin, what a dork you were. <laughs> I wasn't mad because you were my bro. Oh, and, my God. And I didn't have a lot of friends. Oh, my <laughs> oh that's horrible. And you're still my friend. <laughs> and so, but so it kind of made me kind of interested to see like how it was all going to shake out. So. Um, I have something to tell you about the crying game well, let later. Me fin- <laughs> let, me, let me finish that. Let me finish. Okay, let ahead, me say something ahead. because because oh, if you were man. really savvy, yeah, and you really paid attention, yes, in in Empire, okay, um, and I can't, I don't have the soundbite. I'm sorry. Um, in Empire, Obi Wan says that boy was our last hope, and Yoda oh, yeah. says there is no, there is there is another, and. And these movies, the sound she effects doesn't kiss Luke. And the sound effects are so loud mm-hmm. that, and the dialogue oh, is so it, low. Though. And I did not hear it. I heard and it I in remember the actually I thinking, that. like, "What did he say? What did he say?" I'd never heard what he said. Yeah. And I, th- if you were savvy, I think you could have deduced. Yeah. That. yeah. Um, but uh, so I didn't even hear it. So I, I remember but, hearing it, but not thinking it was Leia. Okay. I thought it might be Han. 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 Yeah. Han. 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 I thought it was one named Jawas. <laughs> Jawas. But um, oh, Star Wars is out. We're Thir- going. To Thirty see- years later, I'd like to apologize to you. <laughs> I still love you, brother. Don't worry about it. But uh, this is uh, another artist that we Ooh, absolutely yeah. fell in love with, and um, I, I hope she's in love with us. If Garrison Bailey was in love with me, man, I would just be the happiest right. man ever. Okay. Garrison Bailey, I will be on the Ludini Rock and nice. Roll Circus.
broke because I didn't get paid very much to do American Graffiti. It took me two and a half years to do it. And um, so uh, I was desperate to get another job. When I had gotten the deal to do American Graffiti, um, I the uh, United Artists, who I made the deal, first deal with to develop it, uh, said, you got any other ideas? And I said, well, I've been thinking about kind of a space adventure, Saturday matinee serial kind of movie. And they said, okay, well, we'll do that too. So when I finished American Graffiti, uh, the studio was, the Universal was not going to release it. Uh, I was dead broke. And so I had to get a job just to live. <laughs> and so I had this deal to do this uh, space film. And so I went to, um, to uh, uh, United Artists with this idea of the space film. And uh, they turned it down. Of course. And then I went to Universal for the idea of the space film, and they turned it down. And finally, um, in the process of us screening the film for anybody and everybody who would look at it in order to try to get it released, American Graffiti, uh, Alan Ladd Jr. saw it, who was the head of 20th Century Fox. And he said, I love this movie. You're very talented. And what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm trying to get this space thing off the ground. Uh, And he said, okay, well, I'll I'll fund the, the screenplay. And uh, so that's, I got the deal to do the screenplay, and it wasn't really until six months later that American Graffiti came out and was a hit. This was all done when that's I was starving. That's a good film. I, you like American Graffiti? Awesome yeah. film. The $20,000 I got to write the screenplay was like more money than I'd seen in two years. <laughs> so I was very uh, relieved that I could now He's like a sit back, write a screenplay, <laughs> have a job, oh, you know, yeah. eat a decent meal, and that sort of thing. And... Um, so later on, when Marin Graffiti came out and was this giant hit, then um, uh, I used that opportunity to um, uh, secure my position with the film I had been working on, which was Star Wars. Yes. And um, I had made a deal with the did. studio. They expected me to come back and suddenly ask for more money because that was the hottest director in Hollywood, and I didn't do that. What I did is I was very concerned that they, uh, it, by this time I had written uh, a very long script, and I had been forced really... Well, he to, was really uh, hot to, to get this made. Um, yeah. This yeah. is uh, John, uh, John Williams. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is George, Lu- George, George Lucas Lucas talking about the making, how he, how he, what he went through to get the Star Wars uh, start off the ground. It's very fascinating. Um, there's a well, lot of great videos on YouTube. You can check it all out. Go you know, ahead, Kevin. Having, hearing him talk about his space movie, <clears throat> I can remember when the movie first came out before anybody had seen it, blah, blah, blah. And just the title alone. Look at the title. Of, no, we know now. Star Wars. Star Wars. You know? Look at the title. Star Wars. Back then, when I first heard it, I'm like, oh, space battles. You know? Yeah. But now it's like so synonymous with that. Well, we movie. thought, we were, well, we were thinking Captain Kirk and Buck Rogers. Yeah, exactly. Star yeah. Wars. They're very, very bland. T- think and about think, very about, bland think about what Star Wars <clears throat> spawned. Mm-hmm. Like, oh at, the, all the TV stuff that happened, Battle like Star Battlestar Galact- Galactica <sighs> and, and Buck Rogers in Buck the 21st Rogers. century. Yes, yes. I mean, and really, like, even shows like um, other sci fi, sort of like Knight Rider and these mm-hmm, different shows mm-hmm. were sort of like. Technology. That, that became the new Western. Remember? No? That became the new Western. Well, I mean, and my. my my dad and my uncle uh, would often tell me about, you know, how they would go, and they would watch the serials right. each week. Exactly. And, um, you know, that was something that inspired George, George Lucas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, what's going to happen next? Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you're listening to the Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. We play Garrison oh, Bailey, and oh, I want to plug, we, well, we're like absolutely She's a not. nicer girl. He's, she's a better nicer girl. See, she's see, a see. good the drummer and a good the singer. See, we like her music. Uh, ReverbNation.com backslash. Garrison Bailey. Spock, what is it with this Garrison Bailey? Uh, why am I going to Star Trek? Anyway, because we uh, love them both. We we'll, love them both. We'll, 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 we'll tell you that. We're we Trekker Star Warsies. Um, sure. Before that, I played Con. We, we played uh, uh, Jeff Fetterman earlier. JeffFetterman.com. Uh, State of Sate. We played Sate. Uh, the State of Sate.com. We played Sate. We, and uh, Convoy. Garrison Bailey. Con. We played Con. We played Convoy. Convoy. Yeah. Reverb Nation backslash Convoy. Okay, so name. we're playing some great music. Uh, go to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. It's, it's your one stop shop. 
Everything's Try it. You, right? Give me a yeah. yeah. Come on now, play nice. Um, yeah, I mean, YouTube. The YouTube link is there. You can get, listen to the podcast. I was actually on that the other day. Just like, I was at work. I was, you know, my little break there. And I'm like, I want to listen to a podcast. Oh, oh hey, guys. I want to listen to a podcast. You guys that like to use apps like on your um, pads and on your oh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, mobile devices, sure. you can. We're on iTunes. We're on uh, Podcast Addict. Mm-hmm. We're on um, Player mm-hmm. FM. So you can find us all everywhere. So we're we're linked up with all that stuff. Yeah, I want cool. to tell, tell you guys before we uh, wrap up tonight. Yes. Uh, I have some great interviews that you're going to be hearing soon. Mary Lee Ruan, who's uh, played Pittsburgh back on December eighth, yeah. was a great show. Um, Nick Nichols, Tony Watson. These are both um, MTS management artists. Mm-hmm. Um, very very cool stuff we have coming out. Um, Derek Schulman of Channel Giant, as well as he's also a. Uh, an A and R guy who worked with Bon Jovi and Nickelback and Slipknot and a cool. bunch of bands awesome. you guys absolutely love. Shannon and the Merger, ah, uh, Bonita Adele, not to be confused with Adele, Bonita Adele. Uh, so we have some great interviews coming up, and Very you guys. You're cool. also I wanted to mention I, yes. and um, a couple weeks ago I had a great conversation with Rock. Now, this guy's a legend, and I was so honored. Um, and you guys can find this go to bluesrockreview.com, um, and you and it's uh, and it's right there. Um, I interviewed Leslie West. No way. Uh, yes way. The Leslie West. The Leslie West of the band Mountain. Oh my gosh, and this that's dude, awesome. And um, I, at some point, I'll, I'll, we're going to get the audio up on the circus. Oh, I like to blues please rock do. review. Like yeah. they want to have their moment to get it up on mm-hmm. um, to get the uh, printed version up there. But um, uh, he, he was a lot of fun, guys. If you've yeah, ever heard him on the Howard Stern show, like you know what I'm talking yeah, about. He's yeah. he's he's a real character. He's got a story for everything. Uh-huh. He's one of those guys. Like his life is was very. <laughs> Very dramatic. Yes. So uh, he had me cracking up. I mean, it was a lot of fun. He really uh, talked about his relationship with Jack Bruce. He talks about his relationship with Peter Frampton. Oh, cool. And there's some very, very cool stuff on there. So, um, guys, go to bluesrockreview.com and you guys can check that out. Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Dot com. You can find me on social media, uh, excuse me, on Facebook at just Lou Lombardi. And if you go to Lou Lombardi, you can also find... Yeah, look in the friend list. I'm there. Kevin O'Connor. I'm and the Kevin's, guy. Kev- Kevin's very friendly. <laughs> I am very friendly. He's very friendly. And um, uh, would also like to thank, once again, our sponsors, mtsmanagementgroup.com. Yes, thank you, guys. The great... Uh, the, uh, M- Michael Stover, the owner, is... Uh, very uh, serious about your success as a musician. Yeah. So if you're a musician, I highly recommend that you go check check that out. Yes. Um, and uh, go to uh, pplmag.com, Positively Pittsburgh Magazine Live. Hi, Joanne. We love Joanne Quinn Smith. She's been with me since the beginning. She has mentored me. She's the reason I'm doing podcasts <laughs> is because of Joanne. Very and uh, you want to check out her website, pplmag.com. It's an amazing like, hub of oh, like yeah. internet TV All and podcasts and great blogs and a lot of great information on, on like how to do's and anything you want to mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. It's very, very cool. And she's got listeners. She's got like something like um, uh, she she gets like six million hits a, a month wow. you know, from like awesome. all over the world. So well, yeah, very, you know, her and I like one day, um, was funny. Like her and I uh, a couple months ago went out. Uh, we had to we went out to dinner. Mm-hmm. And, wait, and the, wait, wait, wait. You guys went to. You guys want to Wait, I know, I know. Anyways, was and, it nice? It was very nice. Mm-hmm. And and the way she just comes up and says. <laughs> Wait a minute, aren't she says the Joanne? Aren't you the techno granny? Get out yeah, of here! Yeah, like, awesome. I recognize your voice. That's so, fantastic. Yeah, yeah so uh, we love Joanne. She's uh, she's been a big supporter of mine, and yes. I we really appreciate everything yes, she's done. Do. Kevin, is there anything you'd like to plug or say before nah. we get the hell out of here? We're going to go see Star Wars. Yes, we are. I've got goosebumps. I don't want to waste any time plugging anything. Let's go. Let's go now. Okay. Um, right. Just real quick, I just want to say that um, that if uh, you love the music of Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, go, uh, just any, it's on RDO, it's on Spotify, iTunes. The music of Star Wars 30th anniversary uh, collector's edition is out. And that's what we're just sort of playing in the background here. Yeah. And, um, it's wonderful music. It's elegantly done. And you guys will really enjoy it if you are a Star Wars fan. Uh, just real quick to recap, we played Convoy, mm-hmm. Jeff Fetterman, right. Sate, yes. and Garrison Bailey. Now yes. we're going to rock out of here with a guy I just saw about a month ago. Uh, at a little, little uh, bar around here, and he's still so amazing. He's one of the most passionate and like um, emotional guitarists I that I know. 
uh, Angry Johnny Stangry. All right. And don't don't let the angry part. Don't no. worry. He's not going to like he's beat you over the head with his guitar. Angry. No, he's not going to kill you or nothing. But you can, you can go to angryjohnnystangry.com, and they got gigs all over the place. Nice. Um, really killer. John is an amazing guitar player, mm-hmm. one of my favorites, and he's a good buddy. And um, we're going to go ahead and ch- we're going to rock out of here. Guys, thank you so much. with are with Rock and Roll Circus. Dot com. The, um, you're with Ludini Rock and Roll Circus. Go to Ludini Rock and Roll Circus dot com, and we will see you guys on the next podcast. Um, have a uh, we're going to be back on the 26th, which is the day after Christmas. Yeah. So you guys have a wonderful Christmas and go see Star Wars. Yes. Kevin, what are you going to tell people to do? Go see Star Wars. Go see. Get off your ass. Hey, guys, 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 see Star Wars, K. Thank you, Pittsburgh, you Kevin. Pittsburgh Kevin. And don't so. forget to go to PittsburghKevin.com. Gay, guy, gays, uh, and guys, gays oh and guys, we are the not, like as Jerry Seinfeld would say, yes. not that there's anything wrong, wrong with, with that. <laughs> but guys, go check out uh, LudiniRockandRollCircus.com. Thank you so much for wa- for watching. You, yeah, if you're looking, watching. If you're looking, you're looking at, at your device. <laughs> thanks for watching. Kevin, you said device like it was a dirty word. Thanks for looking at your... Device. Okay, we're getting out of here. <laughs> Angry Johnny Stangry, Andy jo- AngryJohnnyStangry.com, Sugarbush Queen. See you guys next time. See ya. She's a Sugarbush girl, she's a Sugarbush queen. A local prostitute down in New Orleans She's the type of girl that would make a yellow Good Lord, I want to taste that gumbo A raging cage, y'all, it came from engaging You got to go and leave that sugar bush in you Sugar bush, girl, you know you have a good heart It's hard to get near your girl with them bars Why don't you wear the genie lamp and make it with not to have that cat piss. She's a saint, but she'll make you faint. She's a hurricane, you're gonna blow you away. Back him up, shoot him up, his breeze is gonna shut you up. It's in me from way back away. Sick it up, rip it up, a drink of that. I've had enough of it for a little hold in my seat. Sugar Bush girl, she's a mega touch train. A poke and hold the girl, lost hoes and dreams. Her think the chain of good and not compare. This girl's full of gas, blue eyes and black hair. She stab you with a dart away at the bar. The man gets her ear, well, his name is Bar. Oh